What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Call of Duty Vanguard. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the final base SMG that launched with the game, and this is the PPSH-41. And starting it off, as always, let's have a look at our damage profile, which with this, we're going to be able to get a 4-5 to five shot kill with this gun. However, in the minimum damage range, at the longest ranges with this gun, you do have to hit every shot to the torso if you want to maintain that 5 shot kill. As for headshots, they're not particularly effective with this gun. Up close, you need two headshots mixed in with body shots to reduce the number of shots to kill, which when you factor in the recoil of this gun, you're usually just better off aiming for the torso. As for a rate of fire, this is the fastest rate of fire out of all of the SMGs and most of the guns in this game at 952 rounds per minute. And what this means for our time to kill potential is with a four shot kill, it'll be 189 milliseconds, which is a very competitive time to kill right out of the box with no attachments needed. And then even with a five shot kill, our time to kill is fairly competitive here at 252 milliseconds. It's also worth noting if we manage to land those two headshots mixed in with body shots up close, we can get a headshot time to kill potential of 126 milliseconds. Now, moving on to our bullet velocity, this is 353 meters per second, which is standard for SMGs, and now let's get into our ranges. And this isn't one of the strong suits. The PPSH actually has the worst range profile out of all of the SMGs. That four-shot kill range only extends out to about 13 meters, and then our guaranteed five-shot kill will extend out to 23 meters. Beyond that, you have to hit every single shot to the torso if you want to maintain that five-shot kill. Then, taking a look at hardcore game modes, the PPSH is never going to be a one-shot kill to the body. However, between zero and 20 23 meters, you can get a one-shot kill with a head or neck shot. After that, let's have a look at our hip fire, which is the worst in the SMG category. It has quite a wide hip fire by default. And after that, let's move into idle sway, which as you can see here, there's a good amount of idle sway with this, but this gun is clearly not designed for longer ranges anyways, because when we look at our recoil pattern here, as you can see, there is a lot of recoil with this. It zigzags a ton. There's a lot of side to side bounce, a lot of horizontal recoil, and also a massive jump between the first and second shot. So this is actually one of the least accurate guns in the entire game without any attachments equipped. As for our aim down sight spread or bloom, there's a decent amount with the PPSH, but within the ranges you should be reasonably using this gun, this shouldn't be much of an issue for you. And with that, let's move into the handling stats, and our aim down sight time is pretty much average for SMGs at 200 milliseconds. Our sprint out time is a little bit slower than average at 200 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time. And now let's have a look at our reload add time, which is pretty much bang on average for an SMG at 1.7 seconds. Now finally, for the base stats of this gun with no attachments, let's have a look at our movement speeds. And our base movement speed is average for SMGs, our sprint movement speed also bang on average for SMGs, and our aim walking movement speed is just a little bit slower than average, but it's still a very solid aim walking movement speed. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for the base version of the PPSH with no attachments equipped. Now let's start diving into some of the more important attachments, and of course we're going to start it off with barrels and the recoil that we see with each of the barrels that we can equip. When it comes to the first barrel, this one definitely increases that crazy horizontal bounce, so it makes it even less controllable. The second barrel, this one massively increases our rate of fire, but this also just makes the recoil almost random. This is a completely uncontrollable recoil pattern. And then with the next barrel, the third one, even though the vertical recoil isn't quite as much as the previous ones, the horizontal recoil is still completely unmanageable and out of control. And this just leaves us with the final barrel, which actually improves our recoil nicely. If we look at that compared to the base, this is a great improvement. And therefore, if you're looking for a slightly more accurate build, that fourth barrel is an excellent choice. Next up, let's have a look at how these barrels will impact our ranges. And as you can see here, most of them just have a very small effect, especially since these base ranges are so short. A 15 to 20% change isn't really going to be super noticeable. However, you can see the differences right there. And now I want to dive a little bit deeper into the barrels that directly impact our time to kill potential. And the first one is the second barrel. And this one, like I said, pretty massively increases our rate of fire up to 1132 rounds per minute, which does improve our base time to kill potential, even though it's gonna take the same number of shots to kill. So on paper, that's looking pretty good so far, but when we look back and remember just how ridiculous the recoil gets with this, I would say this barrel is practically useless outside of really niche, super close quarters builds. Like if you wanted to make a hip fire build with this or something, that might be great. But the moment you try to stretch this out, even to mid-range, you're not going to be able to hit your target consistently. As for the next barrel that impacts our time to kill potential, this is the third barrel. And with this one, we don't get as much of a boost to our rate of fire, but it is still boosted. 
and therefore we are still seeing a slight improvement to our time to kill. However, it's a very similar story compared to the previous barrel. Even though we don't get as much vertical recoil, this horizontal recoil is still crazy and uncontrollable beyond close to mid-range. And as a result, just like with the last barrel, this is only viable up close. And honestly, if you decide to limit yourself anyway, you may as well go with the one with the faster fire rate, because at least it's going to be better at those really, really close quarter situations. So those are the barrel attachments on the PPSH. Now let's move into some of the magazine attachments. And once again, we're going to start this off with our recoil, which as you can see here, if we are using the 8mm Nambu rounds, this will be reducing our recoil by a noticeable margin, although there is still a good amount of that crazy horizontal bounce and sway, which is very difficult to control and predict. And then with the 30 Russian short ammo, you can see things are just bouncing side to side like crazy. This is practically uncontrollable beyond close to maybe a little bit of mid-range. Speaking of ranges, let's have a look at how these different calibers will affect our range. As you can see there, the 8mm Nambu will decrease our ranges while also eliminating our 4-shot kill potential up close. Whereas 30 Russian Shorts, this increases our ranges and it gives us a 3-shot kill potential up close. So let's dive a little bit deeper into those and we'll start off with the 8mm Nambu. Now with this you can see it's now going to be a 5-shot kill up close instead of a 4-shot kill. Mid-range will still be a 5-shot kill and then long range is now a 6-shot kill. As for a rate of fire, this is boosted up to 1,034 rounds per minute. And what this means is our time to kill up close isn't quite as good as the base version of the PPSH. But at mid-range, it's actually a little bit better since it's still killing in 5 shots. But we now have a faster fire rate. And then at longer ranges, we have a worse time to kill there. It's also worth noting, if you are using 8mm Nambu, medium to longer ranges are very unforgiving with the shots to kill. You really can't be mixing in too many limb shots, otherwise it's going to take you an extra bullet to kill. So with this one, I would say it's generally not worth using for the slightly better recoil that you get out of this, as well as the improvement to our rate of fire. And therefore, I just never really see myself using the 8mm Nambu. As for 30 Russian Short, on the other hand, this is the final magazine attachment you unlocked. This is now going to be a guaranteed 3-shot kill up close, 4-shot kill at mid-range, and 5-shot kill at a distance, even if you're shooting them in the limbs. This boost to our damage does come at a cost of our rate of fire, though. It's reduced down to 869 rounds per minute. However, our time to kill potential up close is incredible at 138 milliseconds for body shots, which is really, really fast. And then at mid-range, it's 207... And then at mid-range, it's 207 milliseconds. However, at longer ranges, it is slower than the base time to kill at 276 milliseconds. Overall, I would say this is great for consistency in the number of shots to kill with this gun. However, that massive increase to the side-to-side -side bounce with our recoil makes using this ammo type quite challenging, especially if you try to stretch the ranges out. And therefore, I would say if you're looking for versatility, this may not be the best bet for you. And with that, that's finally going to wrap it up for the important attachments I want to cover, and it's time to move into some excellent attachment combinations. The first one I've got for you guys is my all-arounder. This is my preferred way of running the PPSH for a wide variety of situations. And the main focus with this is not so much trying to change my time to kill potential, because the base time to kill is amazing with this gun. So instead, what I'm trying to focus on here is primarily accuracy as well as magazine capacity. So with this, some of the highlights, we've got the hollow points attachment on there, and this is for the longer range five shot kill range, where previously you would have to hit all five shots to the torso to get that five shot kill. Now you can hit anywhere in the body and you'll still be getting that five shot kill. So it's great for consistency there. We've got an amazing time to kill potential with this, a massive magazine capacity at 71 rounds, and this setup is surprisingly accurate too. I've got a lot of attachments here to help with the accuracy, so you can feel comfortable stretching the range out at least a little bit with this, and on top of that, it's got excellent handling. So yeah, that's my great sort of all-arounder with the PPSH, where I tried to take advantage of its inherent strengths while doing my best to boost all of its weaknesses. As for the second setup that I've got for you guys, this one is designed for hip fire, and this is very good at hip firing as well. So with this one, we've got the barrel that massively improves our rate of fire. We've got the 8mm Nambu rounds, which also boost our rate of fire, which gives us an insane rate of fire potential at over 1200 rounds per minute. This is now going to be a 5-shot kill at close to mid-range. However, once again, we're using hollow points on this, so it's a guaranteed 5-shot kill within those two ranges, and then a 6-shot kill at longer ranges, but we won't really be taking advantage of that since we're hip-firing mainly with this build. And basically, every other attachment on this is just designed to maximize our hip-fire potential, which, as you can see, we get a very solid hip-fire spread, and this is quite effective at just running around the map and hip-firing everything. 
And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the PPSH-41. As for my thoughts on this gun, I do think it's underrated to some extent. Like I understand why it's not all that popular because that recoil is pretty crazy. And it also takes quite a long time to get to a lot of the good attachments like that final barrel, for instance, that really helps this gun out a lot. So I kind of get it, but I also feel if people were willing to put more time in with the PPSH, many of them would end up falling in love with it. Now, of course, that is just my opinion of this gun. I'd like to hear from you guys in the comment section below. What do you think of the PPSH-41? Do you think it's actually a decent underrated gun or do you think it is absolute trash? Also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will of course leave a link to the playlist in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.